Spider-Man, clearly one of the coolest superheroes out there. He has the power to shoot super strong spider webs from his hands, a power that he uses not only to swing from one building to another and travel long distances in no time at all, but also to save people's lives in novel and endlessly interesting ways. Unfortunately, he couldn't save his girlfriend when she was thrown off a tall bridge. If this comes as a surprise to you, it happened like this. In the 121st edition of the Amazing Spider-Man comic series, Green Goblin, one of Spider-Man's arch enemies, throws Spider-Man's girlfriend, Gwen Stacy, off a bridge. Spider-Man shoots his webbing and catches her before she hits the water, but just as her free fall is abruptly stopped by his webbing, there's a distinctive snap heard, indicating that Gwen's neck had broken. First, let's talk about why falling from a great height can be so deadly. The main reason why such a fall can be fatal is that, when you're falling from a great height, your downward velocity will continue to increase until you reach something called terminal velocity. In other words, you plummet at a great speed, even if you just drop from a skyscraper, as opposed to jumping off with an initial velocity. However, when you hit the ground, your body experiences a drastic change in velocity, as it reduces from approximately 100 miles per hour to zero miles per hour in less than a second. Now, let's look at the case of Gwen Stacy's freefall. In order to determine how large a force acted on Gwen when she was brought to an abrupt stop by Spidey's webbing, we first need to calculate how fast she was going before the webbing caught her and stopped her descent. This is pretty easy to calculate. We can use the v squared equals 2gh formula to calculate her downward velocity, where g equals 9.8 meters per second squared, and h is the height through which Gwen has already fallen. Let's assume that distance to be 300 feet. After plugging in the values in the formula, her final velocity comes out at 42 meters per second, or 95 miles per hour. That's pretty fast. That's actually the typical peak speed of a local service train. Although air resistance will slow her down somewhat, it's not enough to make a significant difference in her final velocity. Now that we have the final velocity of Gwen, we can assume that Gwen weighs 110 pounds and then use Newton's second law to calculate how large a force acted on Gwen when she was stopped by Spidey's webbing. Using the formula F equals MA and putting in the appropriate values, the magnitude of the force comes out to be 970 pounds. This means that Spidey's webbing applied a force that is nearly 10 times Gwen's own weight, and that force was applied in just half a second. In other words, her body experienced a force equivalent to 10 Gs in just 0.5 seconds. That's simply too much force for the average human body to experience in such a small amount of time. That's why there was a distinctive snap in Gwen's neck when her neck was broken. This was due to the sudden and abrupt halt, and the subsequent force brought on by Spider-Man's webbing. If Spider-Man had caught her in the webbing as she fell from the bridge, or if his web could have stretched so that the huge force experienced by Gwen's body could have been spread over a few seconds, then Gwen probably could have been saved. Although it's true that Spider-Man's actions resulted in her death due to whiplash, even if he had done nothing, she would have hit the water and undoubtedly perished. There was simply no way out of the situation. It was clearly not Spider-Man's day, as both his enemy and the laws of physics were conspiring against him. However, in later editions of the comic, Spider-Man changed his tactic of saving free-falling victims. He began diving after the victim and shooting his webbing only after physically grabbing the person and then swinging to safety. So, as it turned out, Spider-Man did learn the importance of Newton's second law of motion and used the same principle to save countless more lives.